Hi guys and welcome to my last video of the Z5 series. I reviewed the Z5, I reviewed the Z5 Premium and I also compared the Z5 with the Z3. And now it's time for the review of the Z5 Compact, which actually is the best of the Z5. Yes, I saved the last for the best. And actually I gotta say I didn't even expect that before I went into the reviews, because I thought this is the least interesting for me I will do this as the last one, but using it for now almost a week now, exclusively as my daily driver, I have to say this is hands down the best Z5 of all of them. And in this review I want to show you why exactly and as always you can feel free to use the time codes. Okay, so here is it let's check it of course as you can see it is really small and compact just comparing it with the z5 it looks a lot smaller of course it has a way smaller display 4.6 against 5.2 but that's definitely not all that makes it so much nicer because i definitely always prefer a more compact phone for one hand usability but that is definitely not the great thing here because there are a lot of things that i like what's the first thing the first obvious thing is i can use it 100% in one hand use without any issues. But a few of the complaints that I had about the Z5 and the Z5 Premium are gone here, which would be, we had this edge here on the side that you can see here on the Z5, also on the front, this black plastic rim that I thought would be or was sharp. That is simply not here on the Z5 compact as you can see it's only this plastic border that is a little bit raised but being of plastic and maybe coated slightly it is way less sharp and way less aggressive way less rough and feels so much nicer it is still there and i would wish for it to be even a little bit more round but it definitely isn't as annoying or slightly not as comfortable as it is on the other two and that's why i'm actually fine with it totally on the back even more so because there i never noticed it and since it is so compact and i hold it onto i don't really notice the sides here and that's why this issue is completely gone the one thing i would have wished for to be a little bit different is here the positioning of the power button because as you can see here it is way lower and i thought the position to be pretty much perfect on the Z5. This is a little bit lower, but it's still, as you can see here in the middle of the device, this means it's a little bit off because I would have expected it to be here. It's still totally fine, you will get to it. And the nice thing is, it has a subtle click. Not this clicky click of the Z5 that I found to be a little bit cheap. Still, the position of the volume rocker is a little bit odd because you have to stretch extremely way down this time camera button is still there the back is also the frosted glass that we had on the z5 it is a little bit slippery same as, as the sides because the sides actually are more slippery than the metal sides of the z5 that is quite grippy it's a little bit more so a slippery thing here but since you can easily hold on to the vice at all times it is not a real issue and definitely it feels really really nice so i'm absolutely fine here once again we also have here the flash the camera on the top the microphone the headphone jack this time just a little bit different compared to the z5 the sim card and sd card tray are at the bottom with the lanyard here and the micro usb at the bottom and something i actually forgot to to tell on any of these z5 reviews it's waterproof even though it doesn't have a flap which is a definitely a nice bonus even though i don't care so much for it but it's nice the fingerprint reader for some reason worked a little bit less good as it did on the others. It still works fine, but I think you really have to set it up properly because as you can see here, it works fast and it's definitely for me the most convenient way of using one. So I'm totally fine with it. I still like it absolutely. Even there, double tap to wake is here and I didn't have any issues here this time, which is definitely nice to see. So in terms of build quality, I like it a lot more. It feels a lot more round. It feels a lot more comfortable. Feels really solid, no squeaking or so. So way better, way better than the Z5. Now let's check the display. It's a 4.6 inch 720p display. Yes, it's not as sharp as the other two and you will mostly see this and if you watch for example something YouTube and high res but I still totally think it's fine enough. If you see some text or that, it's never really blurry. You notice it is not as sharp 
but still totally sharp enough and I don't have any issues. The great things and the great qualities of the others is still there. It is really bright, maybe not quite as bright as the other two. The white, absolutely fine. You still have the white balance control, which is absolutely nice. The blacks are also still very solid. The normal, typical glow viewing angles are okay as well not maybe amazing but what i still like the most here is the color calibration very nice vibrant vivid colors almost punchy but definitely still absolutely natural so i still really really like this display and even though it's maybe just 720p i don't have an issue at all and i still like it a lot 1080p maybe would have been nice but there would have also been the sacrifice of the device being may be burdened by the battery life. So, the sound, that would be the next part. And I didn't sound overly impressed by the sound on the other tools. This is different here, let's check it. And, so, and just so you don't think that I did tell something wrong in my other review when I said it is not that great. The great thing here is, now let's check the, the loudness. Once again. I'm not quite... I'm not quite sure how well the, the recorder or the audio microphone picks it up, but it is noticeably louder and it's also a little bit richer in terms of sound. So this sound really is good, really good, actually great. It's maybe not as loud as for example the Moto X Pure, but for a phone as small as this one, the sound is absolutely impressive. Nice slightly bass, nice mids, really actually full and rich voices clear highs and a good volume and I would have been so much happier if the other two would have had the same sound because this one as it is is absolutely more than just satisfying. Now let's check the performance here, the browser first and if you saw one of the other review already you will see absolutely smooth, no complaints here, really really buttery smooth. For example Phoenix here once again as well as you can see almost no lag. The 720p has an even easier task delivering a great performance than the 1080p and the 4k screen did. So absolutely fine. Let's check Palabra once again. As you can see, absolutely satisfying, absolutely responsive. Also, if I use my gestures, this is totally fine. As you can see, works totally fine. It's maybe not super responsive. It needs a little bit of time, but it's totally good as well if we check it also with only two gigabytes of ram you do notice a little bit of a difference so if you are a really hardcore app switcher and really use some more advanced apps that just need more ram you will notice a small little difference but actually i was totally fine didn't really have anything to say in normal daily use it wasn't really that noticeable. If you really look forward to it, then maybe yes, you will notice two gigabytes of RAM. And I would have still preferred the three gigabytes just to be a little bit more future proof, but I don't see it as an issue as, at all. Now, the gaming performance is pretty much exactly the same as it is on the other two. If it would actually load. Okay, let's try it. I know it wasn't the smartest thing to use a level at night, but it should be good enough to show off the performance. I really hope so. Okay, let's go into it. As you can see, this is absolutely smooth. No opponents here this time, this was my bad. But if you want to see the performance, you could pretty much watch the Z5 review or the premium review, there's not really a difference. The pretty much same casual lag sometimes overall, Performance still absolutely top-notch. Now, battery life. Full charge takes about one hour and 35, totally fine. Once again, I have to say that there is no quick charge 2.0 charger included. I used mine and it doesn't seem to be as fast as it should be, but it's totally fine with one hour 35. But what about the battery life? And this is quite impressive, even though a little bit odd, I have to say, because I will talk about it in just a second. Let's see what we've got here. The first day was one hour, uh, one day, 16 hours and four hours and 35 of screen on time. So this is two days, 
but I have to say this is only on Wi-Fi. Now the first normal day, four hours and 40 over the course of one day, this was with mixed use. Then once again, four hours and 42 over the course of one day. And today, for example, I was, I used 34% and got two hours. So it looks like you could, or you should be able to reach six hours of screen on time, but I didn't because the battery life seems to be a little bit wobbly or wonky in terms of what it shows. Because the first 50%, it looks very, very promising. And after that, it slightly decreases or the battery drains faster. And especially the last like 10% go down very quickly. But I would expect, as you saw, very strong four and a half to five hours of a daily mixed use should be no problem. If you lower the brightness, I used 65%, which was fine for me all the time. No complaints here at all. So the battery life is definitely also the best one of all those. And I think with a more normal use because I had a little bit of a drain for the first two days and like overnight I lo lost more percent than usually. I got it fixed the last day and I would expect to be five hours almost pretty much a constant solid which is very good and I'm impressed with the battery life. Now let's check the software and as I said it already we have double tap to wake, we have double tap, no we don't have double tap to sleep actually. Fingerprint reader, stock look at once again. Not really sure what to say since I did already the same on all the other reviews. You could check that, but there's not much to say. You have the pretty much same good stuff. 5.1.1, 6.1 or 6.01 should come pretty soon. You have a few little enhancements like the smart light back control, white balance control, as you can see here to change the white levels. This is available, adaptive brightness. You have the glove mode, image enhancement, enhancement to change the colors here, as you can see, this is there. And also a few more sound settings. There's not really so much to talk about. See it as a slightly themed stock Android with a few little minor enhancements. Like I said already on the other reviews, I would have wished for some minor tweaks, like maybe a customizable nav bar or a little bit more customization for the theme engine. But other than that, it's still a great minimalistic, well-functioning UI, no things to complain either. Same as I did already on the other reviews, I will just paste in here the camera review. I wanna start off with the selfies. Selfies look good, but you need a proper lighting because as you can see here, if you don't have proper lighting, it sometimes has a little bit trouble exposuring, but once you have good light, you get really nice ones. So what about the low camera quality? What I noticed a lot is that it brightens up the picture and then you see a lot more noise, but it doesn't maintain anymore a sharp picture. I've seen this picture already a few times with more realistic exposure and then also sharper, but it's still okay, but just not as natural. Now, what about the normal lighting? In normal lighting, you can get really sharp pictures, really great exposure, really great color balance, natural colors, all that. Autofocus on macro had a few issues sometimes, just not focusing super properly, but good enough. So overall, the camera is really, really good. No complaints here at all. Pictures were turned out really nice. Autofocus did a good job on landscape especially, but now about the video qualities that I see as the biggest highlight here, especially 1080p 60 frames looked extremely buttery smooth. Awesome, super smooth and fast zoom. All the focus was perfect. The exposure was very smooth and nice transition. That was done really, really nice. Where I wasn't so happy about was the 4K experience because as you can see here, the 4K footage seems quite wobbly, a little bit janky. Also the color seemed a little bit more dull in my experience. So that's it for the detailed part. Okay, we are back again and it's time for the recap. And a few things will be similar to what I already said on the other tools, but still. Design and build quality, way better. At least I personally think it's way better than on the other two. It feels more round, more organic, more comfortable in the hand. Maybe the power button position isn't that good, but the rest, solid feel, nice, comfortable. One hand usability is great, and that's why it gets a bonus point for me. Overall, totally fine. I really like the design. Yes, a few people say it's ugly and it's fat and it's bulky. But you also have to consider one thing. This has a 27 milliamp hour battery, which is the same battery size than, for example, the Nexus 5X has that is 5.2 inches. So what this one is. So you get a 
battery of a 5.2 incher in a 4.6 incher. So whenever people say, I would rather have better battery life and a slightly thicker device, this is what you wanted. So don't complain about it. I'm totally fine because you have so much room to hold this. If it would have been even one millimeter thicker, it wouldn't make a difference. So totally fine with me. The display, really, really nice. 720p, still more than sharp enough on 4.6 inches. I don't see there's an issue. The Display qualities are top notch, nothing to complain here. Great whites, blacks, colors, really nice. All good here. The sound, <laughs> this is the one thing where I'm actually the most surprised because it's the smallest device with the biggest sound compared to the other ones. It is louder, it sounds richer and is overall just better. So I'm not quite sure why they went for the best sound on the smallest one, which isn't maybe that great for media consumption, but yes, it's still there. The performance pretty much exactly the same as the other two. Super smooth, responsive, fine. Yes, I noticed someone told it to me, if you want to open a picture, it sometimes has a little bit of a delay. So maybe the storage speeds aren't the best ones, but I don't see this as an issue because I don't do this so much and I normally use never really noticed. Gaming performance is also absolutely fine. So top notch here as well. Battery life is also the strongest point of all the free ones because in comparison to its size, display size, CPU and all that it has in relation the biggest battery and that why it also has the biggest battery life. Also I think I say thanks to the 720p display Really good battery life, almost solid five hours. Let's say at least strong four and a half, which is totally fine and actually way above average these days. So I'm good here. Software is solid, totally nothing to say bad about it. It works, it's reliable, it looks nice. Updates are coming, custom ROM support will be coming. So all fine here. Now, the camera, as I already said, really, really great for 1080p 60 frames 4k was a little bit wonky for me and the picture qualities are really really nice sharp detailed good color color um, exposure and all that low light was a little bit boosted slightly brightened up but still okay maybe not the very best camera and as i said all the other tools it's maybe one of the weaker high-end flagship cameras and that's it now to get back to why this is the best one i think it's obvious it has at least for me the best design not this edgy annoying thing the border that i complained about since i prefer smaller phones it gets an extra bonus for me being that compact feels substantial button placement all is great nice display absolutely nice display great sound top performance top battery life top camera so what could you possibly wish for now <laughs> is it the best small phone i would say definitely yes because the choice is really limited there are a lot sub five inches devices on the market but not a flagship so this is pretty much the only choice and i got asked one thing how would this compare to the z3 compact because you would save some money if you get the smaller one and on the z5 compared to the z3 i said it's not really worth upgrading because it's not that much better in anything but if it goes to Z5 Compact to Z3 Compact, I actually think it is worth the upgrade because I wasn't really that impressed with the design of the Z3 because it was back then, the Compact quite bulky, a little bit boxy and it didn't feel as comfortable and premium in the hand because of those plastic sides. They are still plastic here. I'm pretty sure this is plastic because it does look like metal but it feels so much more premium in the hand compared to the Z3. The performance is better, the battery life is better, camera is better, sound is better, so pretty much everything is better on the Z5 Compact. Of course, it's more expensive than the old one, and it's definitely not a cheap device. Here it's around at 430 euros right now, but there is a 50 euro cashback, so let's say 380, an average without that, let's say 400. You definitely get comparable, similar devices, but with a lot of a bigger display size. You can get the Moto X Pure. These days you can get the LG G4, the Nexus 5X, but that's not really an option if you want a small flagship. So it's the only viable small flagship besides the Z3 Compact. If you want that, there's no other option. But if you want a great phone in general, it's still fine. And if I would have to choose between one of those three 
I would actually go for the Z5 Compact because this, the other two just don't feel as well. The sound is better here, the battery life is better, the display is still fine. So for me, it's the most mature of these three devices. It does the least things wrong and actually by far the most things exactly right. And that's all I have to say. I really, really like this and I would gladly use this as my daily driver, even though the screen is a little bit smaller and it is some getting used to, but after using it for a few weeks, typing was actually working fine and it's just a really, really lovely design. It's not just the best small phone, but one of the best phones in general out now. That's it. That's all I have to say. If you liked it, leave it a like. If you didn't, thumbs down. If you want more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions or anything like else, leave them in the comments. And one thing that I have to actually mention, I was asked if there is the overheating. I will maybe make an extra video for it. I personally didn't notice because I didn't record the video long enough for that to happen. And it's super cold out here. But I got comments from other people that it does overheat at least on 1080p with 60 frames after like eight minutes. Keep that in mind. And one thing also, I was asked if the edges between the device pick up dust. No, it won't, but the speakers, they definitely, you will sometimes have to push a little bit air through it to get that done. I think I've answered everything. If not, just leave the questions once again. And that's it. Okay, until next time, bye.